I'm Gage Skelton, I'm the team lead and I'm on the industrial team. I'm Isabel Bowling and I'm on the mechanical team. I'm Wyatt Hackneyos and I'm on the systems team. My name is Coulter Hankhouse and I'm on the mechanical team. My name is Maria Ramon and I'm on the mechanical team. My name is Aaron Stitch, I'm the procurement lead and I'm on the industrial team. The Land Rover is a fitness rowing machine that has been transformed into a human-powered wheeled vehicle that utilizes a combination of rowing mechanics and tricycle design to generate forward motion. Our sponsors, Ben Blim and Daniel O'Connor with Micro Entities Worldwide, task us to improve upon their existing design in order to best combine the benefits of a traditional rowing machine with the added functionality of outdoor mobility. With feedback from users and our team, we've developed a new foldable aluminum frame, improving transportability and significantly reducing the system's weight for the user's convenience. Our team also utilized finite element analysis in order to identify and reinforce high stress areas of the new aluminum frame. The new redesigned drivetrain system also allows the users to put the trike into a neutral position and push themselves backward without the drivetrain binding, a feature that was not previously possible. The drivetrain is also more easily accessible with new access points for ease of maintenance and assembly. Other design considerations include improvements to sound level and quality, turning radius, cable management, and overall usability. Our main objectives that we considered when designing this year's trike were to reduce weight, improve turning radius, improve sound quality, and be able to roll the trike backwards. Last year's drivetrain system consisted of a single length of chain that connected to the handlebar, routed through the frame, around the rear gear hub, and then connected to a bungee cord within the frame. While the system was functional, it had issues with the chain making excessive noise within the frame, and our sponsors also requested that the user be able to roll the trike backwards, which last year's was not able to do. In looking at different drivetrain options this year, we did a pew analysis to evaluate a cable system, lever arm, belt drive, and closed chain system. We decided to move forward with exploring a closed chain system, but also replace some of the chain with cable to improve the sound quality. Our final design features a rear drivetrain assembly that slides into place through an access hole in the bottom of the frame. This assembly has a drive shaft with a custom sprocket that connects to the rear wheel gear hub with a closed loop chain and a free wheel that connects to the handle and bungee cord by another length of chain. The custom sprocket meshes with a disc with engagement pins when the system is in use and has a spring-loaded handle to pull the sprocket off engagement pins for when the user wants to roll backwards. Another complaint about last year's prototype was that it was difficult to steer. After doing some adjustments to last year's suspension and testing the turning radius, we determined that with a lighter spring, the existing design was able to meet all the requirements. However, in this testing, we also noticed that the, as the user was riding, what made steering most difficult was the feeling that you would fall out of your seat if you leaned the amount required to reach the minimum turning radius. So we decided that with the exception of a few minor changes, we would leave the suspension system mostly the same. Another design decision we made was to add a seat belt to our seat. Last year, the user found it difficult to lean into turns without feeling like they were going to fall off. After researching different seat options, we found that a lot of them were much heavier than we would have liked. To prioritize our weight requirement, we came to the conclusion that a seat belt was a great alternative and provides the needed support to the user. So this is our road trike frame model. The main updates we made to it from last year are changing the material to aluminum so that it is lighter. We changed the main frame tube to four inch tubing to accommodate our new drivetrain. And we made the frame fold in half through the addition of this sleeve right here. In order to verify our frame would not break, we used finite element analysis to ensure that it would not yield or fail from fatigue. A good example of this is when we had to cut out this large hole at the bottom of our frame to accommodate the drivetrain. We found that it generated a large stress right here. And to fix this, we added in this support tab. After rerunning the FEA, we found that the frame would no longer yield or fail from fatigue.
Early in the project, our manufacture of the whole integrated system was bottlenecked by our access to a welder that we could use. In the meantime, we had our custom drivetrain parts outsourced and acquired all the other parts that we would need and the ones we'd expect we might want on hand for assembly and integration. Once we had both the drivetrain parts and the welded aluminum frame, we got the team together to assemble the trike. Initially, we assigned a team to assemble the drivetrain, which mainly consisted of the drive shaft, the freewheel, and the freewheel adapter. Another team worked on grinding down the frame welds to spec as well as fastening the foot pedals to the frame. The last two teams were to work on the seat and braking systems, which were more independent of one another. The seat went on first, followed by the suspension, which between jobs had been assembled without much difficulty by the whole team. When it came time to integrate the drivetrain, the whole team was needed to troubleshoot minor issues that arose, such as the initial bungee setup to retract the chain did not stretch long enough to achieve a full length row. To address this, an additional bolt and securing system had to be created towards the front of the frame and a larger bungee fast near the front. There were other complications along the way that had to have on-the-spot solutions engineered to achieve the final product. Once the drivetrain was fully integrated, the braking and gearing system was mounted and testing began. Initially, we just wanted to see if it could row forward as designed, which we were able to do before more complications became apparent. One such unforeseen issue was the connection point between the chain and the bungee was larger than initially modeled, causing an awkward clunk when rowing to full length. This along with other issues that needed to be resolved required another full disassembly and reassembly to get the trike working. For our project, finding a suitable place to work on our trike with all the necessary tools was a major challenge. We struggled to locate a space that was large enough, well equipped, and within our budget. Instead of using our entire budget to buy all the tools, we relied on connections. For example, we gained access to a welder through the welder in the F1 Baja racing workshop. We also learned that to meet certain requirements, sometimes you have to give up on other ones. Requirements have a level of importance. While deciding on the final designs of a project, we realized that the reverse drive train requirement took precedence over the weight requirement. An additional lesson we learned was that not everything goes to plan during the assembly process. We had unexpected interference between the rollers and the bolt location for the frame sleeve. This caused our assembly process to take a little bit longer than expected to complete. We also learned the importance of ordering extra material, if there's adequate room in the budget to account for future mistakes. We ordered extra steel in case the first frame sleeve we made was too tight or too loose, and this was definitely useful since we did end up using that extra steel.